Right, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how DNA copies itself. And, and Watson Crick also worked on this process as well, along with some other researchers. Um, so let's kind of review DNA structure just a little bit. You have your sugar phosphate backbone held together by the phosphodiester bonds, with the nitrogen bases in the center held together by hydrogen bonds, making up the double helix of DNA. So how does DNA get copied? We know that the copying of DNA in eukaryotes happens in the S phase of interphase. And it's copied by a process we call DNA replication. First step is the two strands of DNA have to separate, and that's where the hydrogen bonds become important. It's, those hydrogen bonds are relatively weak. There doesn't take a lot of energy to break them, so this is not too energy intensive of a process. So there's two original strands are used as a template to make two new strands so that each strand that's made in this process is one strand of old and one strand of new DNA. So we call this process semi-conservative. There's an enzyme called DNA polymerase that joins the nucleotides and reads the, the old strand, puts in the complementary base uh, on the new strand so that we have, again, an identical copy of the DNA being produced uh, using the old strands as a template. So here you can kind of see it happens because the two strands are anti-parallel, they run in different directions. Replication runs in basically different directions as well. Um, it's a little, we have something called a leading and a lagging strand and there's a some other, there's some differences in, in that, but we're not going to really worry ourselves too much about that at this point. So where the DNA opens up, that's called the replication fork, and it gets cop copied. The DNA then gets closed back up. Here you can see the DNA polymerase adding the new enzymes. So in this process, the blue strand represents the original DNA strand, the template. It serves as the template. Uh, the orange strand represents the new DNA strand. So again, you have each strand is one side old, one side new DNA. So one of the things we, we know about DNA and cell division is that when an when a, a organism is an embryo, there's an enzyme called telomerase that adds these caps at the end of the eukaryotic chromosomes called telomeres. And basically, the telomeres are to protect the DNA because every time the DNA gets copied, the DNA molecule um, gets a little bit shorter. Well, these telomeres don't contain any important genes, so it doesn't matter if you lose some of those. But once the telomeres get to a certain length, they get to, to where it becomes possible to lose some important DNA, the cell is going to do one of two things. It's either going to just simply live out its life until it wears out, or it's going to go through apoptosis, but it's not going to divide anymore. Um, the only time that happens is when it's a cancer cell. So you can see the lighter colored things on the uh, diagram. Those are the telomeres. So one thing researchers are looking at is, can we figure out a way to turn that telomerase enzyme on after a person's born to allow their cells to continue to divide because most of the signs of aging are the result of cells stopping their division, you know, hair loss and all that stuff. In prokaryotes, because they have that one circular chromosome, they use something called rolling circle replication. So you have the, the DNA molecule opens at one point, there's one origin of replication, and then the enzymes proceed in both directions around the circle until they get to the other side. And at that point, you have two copies of the DNA. We end up with two replication forks, new DNA being added to the old DNA. Uh, and, and that's basically how the process works. Eukaryotes, because they have the, the linear chromosomes, and there's more than one, to get the DNA copied quickly enough to allow things to happen when they need to, there are several origins of replication. Replication starts on several different points along each chromosome. So there's going to be multiple replication forks uh, within that chromosome as the replication process occurs. 